advertisements in the past weren't always adhering to our modern politically correct standards, but I'm gonna go over nine sexist ads, recent and from past. I'm gonna analyze them a bit from a marketer's point of view. The first ad is hilarious. This is an ad for a cigar company and they're saying, bring out the caveman in you with a dude holding a cigar in one hand, a really, this club, I think it's a cigar as well. It's just like a big club. They're comparing a cigar to a club, which I didn't pick up on at first, but it's kind of cool. And you have that chick in the leopard print just looking up at him. Now this ad, it's more of a branding ad. It's not really trying to get people to buy the product right there and then. It's just branding to increase popularity of cigars. And what I believe this ad does well is it actually, it links cigars and masculinity very well. And even though it's very sexist, it does link those two concepts. I didn't really pick up on that. The club was actually a cigar, but in general, this is a branding ad, not a direct response ad, but it works for branding if we're looking at it from a purely marketing point of view. Now this second ad, I still don't totally understand what it's for. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's nice to have a girl around the house and then you have this dude stepping on her head. I mean, whoa, over the top. And in marketing, we call this a pattern interrupt. Uh, I use lots of pattern interrupts in marketing. Uh, pattern interrupt is when you do a complete non sequitur and you link it to a different product. Something I might say in an ad might be, you're gonna die someday. How are you where you want to be in life? Well, you can sign up and learn how to market products online and start an internet business. I took a concept, you're gonna die, and I linked it to learning how to start an online business. But in the case of my YouTube ads, that works very well. In this case, I don't really see this pattern interrupt working very well. All I really remember from this ad is, oh, there's a dude stepping on a chick's head, but it's advertisement for leggings. I mean, I have no idea how this ad is building any branding or encouraging any women to buy leggings. I don't even see leggings in this ad. It doesn't make me wanna buy leggings or maybe it's dress pants, but it doesn't, I don't think this ad does a very good job of actually helping the company market their products but uh, it is very memorable. This third ad works very well, and it worked, I can tell you it worked. Marlboro in general has some of the most memorable advertising throughout history, and they've created a monster brand, the de facto cigarette brand in the world because of their very strong advertising. And as you see in this ad, where there's a man, there's a Marlboro. They've linked those concept of masculinity and smoking Marlboro cigarettes very well. Even in, in the olden days with their cowboy imagery, everything they've done is very focused on that masculinity and cigarettes. They've done it great here as well. And in the ad, it basically, they've linked these concepts, but it's a mild and it's got a filter and it's got a good taste. They get all of those across in this ad. Very simple, perfect example of a branding ad, even though it's obviously very sexist and uh, not acceptable by today's societal standards. This ad is interesting, right? Again, obviously sex is blowing her face and she'll follow you anywhere. Just sort of ridiculous and assuming that women have zero free will, which obviously is not true. But in this case, they're trying to link the concepts in this ad of flavors. The assumption is women like fruity flavors and this cigarette has fruity flavors. The smoke of the cigarette is also a fruity flavor and smoking the cigarette will get you more women attracted to you. There's a lot of logical leaps that the marketers are trying to accomplish in this ad. It doesn't fully work. They should have focused a little closer if they wanted this to be effective on just the flavor or the taste. They could have 
made it a much simpler ad to get their point across. It'll blow your mind away. BK's super seven incher, right? And she has her face locked. And I'm not gonna say the words here because uh, this is a PG channel, but uh, just obviously ridiculous sexual innuendo in this ad and uh, the super seven incher, right? So uh, leave, leave this video a like if you guys are getting some and gals are getting some laughs out of this. In this case, I don't see this ad working at all. This is an example of a horrible branding ad, you know, social political correctness aside and sexism aside, right? I don't see this ad working very well for creating branding for a Burger King seven inch sandwich at all. It doesn't really make sense. I think they're just having fun, frankly, the marketers, when they could be focusing on why would you buy a seven inch sandwich? Well, the reason I bought BK seven inch sandwiches back in the day was because I was super hungry and one burger didn't do it for me but having a seven inch sandwich with like three patties laid side by side, that filled my hunger pretty well. They're, they're not really focused on that. They're saying they'll blow your mind away. Well, what about your taste buds? You know, blowing your taste buds away would be much more on the mark if you're selling food. Again, just this adds off. I mean, this ad is ridiculous. Like, I can't tell if this guy is going to smack her face or her butt. People actually do this back in the day where like, honey, come over here, you've been bad. Okay, honey, here, let me come over so you can spank me. I hope you and Tom are enjoying meeting all your new neighbors, Diane. Oh, we are. Oh, I'm so glad. You've made us feel so at home. Everything's wonderful. Even the coffee's better. Here. This seems ridiculous if this actually ever did occur for the marketers to put this in an ad. Sexism aside, this ad completely misses the mark because I don't understand why the headline, which is if your husband ever finds out you're not store testing for fresh or coffee, maybe it was something that made sense 50 or 80 years ago. I don't know, but to me, it doesn't really make sense. I, I, I believe the idea in this ad is that men want freshly ground coffee, not in a tin. And it's like controversial, it's in a tin. There is a better way to go about that uh, because the concepts are not really linked very well in this ad. If you wanted to say, look, you can have high quality coffee and it's in a tin, I think they could have gone about that a better way. And an example of a company that did that very well was Folgers, who really created that kind of store-bought tin coffee. This just doesn't link those two concepts together, high quality and in a tin. It, it misses the mark completely. And it's probably one of the most sexist ads I've ever seen. I like this ad for a number of reasons. It's it's, it's fairly sexist in the sense that they're saying the, uh, the flight attendant is gonna, is gonna romance you the whole way uh, to Spain and all around the world. And it's obviously targeting men. But what I like about this is the, the smiling girl, it's an eye catcher. You don't really notice the plane. I understand they're trying to link flight attendant and plane, I think they could have done the image a little bit better to really get across that this is a flight attendant and this is a plane. So I think they could have pushed the plane back to make it clear that this is a plane and that is a flight attendant. But I understand they really wanted to zoom in on her face because that it really catches the eye and grabs attention. And what's fantastic about this is that the way folks naturally read ads, and this applies to Facebook ads as well, is especially applies to Facebook ads, is they look at the image first and then they go up and read the headline and then they go down and they read the description or the body copy. Okay, kind of interesting, right? And in this case, your eye would look at the girl, you'd say, this is sort of interesting, I'm gonna read the first couple words, and it says, this little blonde from Barcelona. That is a pattern interrupt today, it was a pattern interrupt 100 years ago, because most people associate Spanish people with brunettes, brown hair. And in this case, they're saying, this is a blonde from Barcelona, right? There's a little alliteration there, which is kind of nice. 
And you're like, what? Blondes in Barcelona? And then it says they'll romance you. So they're, the kind of appeal they're getting across is we have beautiful flight attendants and we fly to beautiful exotic locations. And I like that. I think that comes across very well in the ad. I think they could have done it better, as I said, with the really making clear the plane and all that stuff. They could have done it with a little map. They did it at the bottom. They have a map of the locations. But the other thing I love about this ad is they have a little area, a form you can fill out. Now, this is how affiliate marketing was done 100 years ago when it was done in print magazines. This is how ads were tracked 100 years ago in magazines is they would look at that little form. That is the call to action. So right here, this is not what I call a branding ad. This is a direct response ad. These people, the Iberia, the airline company that's buying these ads is buying them because they want people's money. They want people booking flights. They wanna get in contact with people. They wanna put people in contact with travel agents. Whatever they're trying to do, they all give folks a way to get in contact with them. A hundred years ago, there weren't websites. You mailed, you sent mail, you called a phone number, and they do a very good job of having a call to action, having a strong image, and having a headline and a pattern interrupt that kind of links it all together. And further down, you'll see this is in a magazine and folks are reading stories in magazines. And in this case, they have a nice little story in here uh, at the bottom of the ad, for folks who are really interested in flights, this will be a great way to get new customers. So I think this is one of the better done ads. <laughs> oh my God. Now for our second to last ad, we have an absolutely ridiculous one. They're just really throwing out that headline. Again, this is called a pattern interrupt where it says husbands beat wives. You're gonna read that and you're gonna say, what? What is this article or whatever it is about? They did a good job of making it look like an article as well. So it's what we call a native ad nowadays. But this is the old school type of native ads where the ads looked like they were part of the magazine. This ad is for Betty Crocker cake mixes, which was maybe a new concept back then. Now, Obviously, Betty Crocker is a brand that's still around to this day. Now, this ad is clearly a branding ad because there is no specific form or phone number that people can fill out or call to actually get a hold of this cake mix, which is what they're selling. So it's branding. They want you to go to your grocery store and ask for Betty Crocker's cake mix with the idea that they're going to get more grocery stores and supermarkets selling their cake mix. The text in the ad below the image is not too bad. It's sort of informative, telling you about the quality, but the headline doesn't really make sense to me. Also, I think they're focused on the wrong target market. They're saying, hey, look, husbands, you're gonna be a better cook than your wife with this cake mix, right? First off, they should probably be focusing on selling to women because women buy more cooking stuff than men do. Women just buy more consumer goods in general than men. This is not sexist statement here from me. This is just numbers, right? It's just data. Uh, so I think they should be focusing on the, the right target market, which is women. And frankly, not only is it demeaning towards women, but the ad is demeaning towards cooks. I mean, if I read this ad, I wouldn't even want to buy Betty Crocker cake mix because I'd say that's offensive to me as a woman. And second off, that's offensive to me as a cook. You know, like my husband could not make a better cake than me with this cake mix. I just don't see the connection really being made. Just offending people isn't really gonna make you a lot of sales. It's just gonna make people mad at you. There's a way to do pattern interrupts that are shocking you want to shock people, but you don't want to offend people, right? You're just not going to make much money. This ad takes the cake in terms of both sexism and being offensive and just frankly being a bad ad that's probably not going to get any results whatsoever. I had to really read this ad closely to even figure out what they were trying to sell here because it's not obvious. And what they're selling is sweat proof, 
underwear for women. And the idea they're trying to get across is that these three pretty women, if you really read the ad, they're single because, again, they don't ever call it out directly, but it, they kind of say they're single because of their odor and perspiration, which they don't know about in their underwear. And that if they just bought Lux's underwear, then they wouldn't have so much sweat in there. And it's just, then they'd get a man. So the suppositions here are obviously sexist. It's offensive. It doesn't get the point across. You don't even see what they're selling. They don't even show an example of the product. They should show the product in the ad. You, if you're buying underwear, you probably want to know what it looks like. This ad just misses the mark on all points and uh, is also incredibly sexist. Now, thanks for watching this video. If you got some entertainment about this and learned something about marketing, give this a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and, and ring that bell and write in the comments. What do we write in the comments, folks? <laughs> because we're warriors. Now, uh, if you wanna see more videos like this where I comment on ads, let me know. Note that I this is all entertainment purposes only. I don't endorse any sexism. You know, we're all just people. And also, if you want to learn more about marketing and how you can create your own marketing business from home or from your local community and start earning money, check out uh, the links in the description. My company, Marketing Tech, we pay out 75 to $300 per month per local business you sign up for online advertising. You can sign up for the software and start getting paid for free. You don't have to pay me anything. And it's an income opportunity where we work together and you can buy this shirt. Again, go out and be professional. I encourage you, check out my software if you're interested in getting into marketing and running your own business in your own local area. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.